All right, what is going on, guys? Welcome back to the next episode of the K Reviews podcast. I am your host, Kenny Moss, rapper and recording artist out of Reno, Nevada. Um, I also host some podcasts. Be sure to check out the biggest little sports cast below if you guys are a sports fan. We recently just started that one back up. Super stoked about it. Um, also, go check out my recent mixtape that dropped in December, Las Sombras, and my album that came out um, earlier last year as well. Um, let me know what you guys think of it. But enough of the plugs let's get into today's video which is going to be ranking the discography of none other than the late great mac miller um rest in peace to mac i'm super grateful for all the art he gave us while he was here um and as i'm sure many of you watching this video are he just had a super super big impact on his audience um on a personal level he was very transparent in his music his music was very therapeutic as a result of that um, and we lost a really great soul and a really great artist when he passed away. So rest in peace, Mac Miller. Um, hopefully we can shine some light on your incredible discography um, and artistry in this video. So without further ado, ma'am, I'm going to be ranking every single project released by Mac Miller. Um, and obviously this includes projects released under different pseudonyms that are secretly Mac Miller as well. Um, a couple of video or a couple of projects that aren't going to be ranked in this video. Every single mixtape released prior to Kids, I'm not going to be ranking um, for the simple fact I haven't heard them. Now, if some of those mixtapes um, are really good and you guys think I'm sleeping on them, let me know which ones to check out down below. I'm always down to listen to more Mac, so I'll check those out if you guys think I'm sleeping. But they're not going to be ranked in this video. The Run On Sentences projects released as Larry Fisherman, the instrumental projects, they're not going to be ranked in this video either. Stolen Youth, the project that he produced for Vince Staples, not going to be in this video. Again, it's it's more so a Vince project than it is a Mac project. And Live From Space isn't going to be in this ranking just because it's a live album. Um, it's not necessarily a studio album. So those are the projects that are excluded from the ranking. The ranking itself is a list of 14 projects from 14 to 1. And let's get right into it, man. So... At number 14, I have released in 2011 On and On and Beyond, which was an EP that came out. Um, it's cool. Nothing crazy. Uh, that one is my least favorite Mac project. We'll just kind of leave it at that. Uh, Blue Slide Park at number 13, released in 2011. Of the 2011 projects, uh, like full-length projects, so of the of Best Day Ever, I Love Life, Thank You, and Blue Slide Park, Blue Slide Park actually ended up being my least favorite personally. It just felt the most commercial the most poppy the most frat rap of that year for mac um and granted all of those tapes kind of had that feel but that one just felt the most poppy to me um and and for that reason didn't really resonate with me as much as everything above it here so i have blue side park at number 13 at number 12 i have i love life thank you the mixtape that came out that same year as blue side park um and it's a little bit more in line with the type of stuff that I would want from Mac, more boom bapish, um, a little bit more rapidy rap, not as poppy as something like Blue Slide Park. Um, so I do like that one. It's definitely not one of my favorites, which is why it's at 12, but I do like it a little bit more than Blue Slide Park. At number 11, we have the EP released in 2012, You by Larry Lovestein and the Red Velvet. Um, Larry Lovestein and the Red Velvet is a fictional jazz group created by Mac Miller. Um, where he wanted to make some jazz music, he went and did it on this album, had that fake that fake name for it, and um, I actually think it came out pretty solid. For somebody who is not a jazz artist, um, it's pretty good. So, yeah, you are just making it out of the top 10 for Mac Miller's projects. And so, now we get into the top 10. Um, these first two albums in the top 10, I do like them, but it's not until we get to the top 8, where like the top 8 are the Mac Miller albums that I love and super hold near and dear to my heart and that i'll probably go in depth on um but number 10 we have delusional thomas which was a mixtape released in 2013 um under the alter ego delusional thomas it's a horror core rap mixtape um it's pretty short um but nonetheless it's it's pretty good i think mac definitely flexes his rapping skills on the mixtape um and of course you know, it's always cool to see an artist kind of step out of their comfort zone and try to do an alter ego kind of thing. It just allows them to expand their creativity a little bit. Um, and up until that point, when Delusional Thomas came out, Mac was very seen as very bright, charismatic, not a very dark artist necessarily. Um, 
And so Delusional Thomas was kind of a steering away into a more dark or darker realm for Mac Miller at the time of its release. Um, but nonetheless, I have it ranked at number 10 here. At number nine, we have Best Day Ever. Um, and I forgot to mention, I've got the All Mac Vinyl Wall. Again, flexing the vinyl collection, guys. Got the All Mac Vinyl Wall up here. Um, but at number nine, I got Best Day Ever, which of the 2011 releases was my favorite. Um, some of the highlights from that one would be, of course, the title track, Best Day Ever. Um, Donald Trump is just super nostalgic, like a super nostalgic party song from from my middle school years. I'll Be There f with Fonte. Fonte is beautiful on the hook, and I'll Be There is actually like one of my favorite Mac Miller songs. Um, this is not one of my favorite Mac Miller projects, but that is certainly one of my favorite Mac Miller songs. Um, if you have a mom, send her that song. I think she'll appreciate it. Um, but yeah, so super, super great song there. Um, for the most part, like, I Keep Floating with Wiz Khalifa is really cool, too. For the most part, this is definitely just party tracks, um, which is why it's not one of my favorite Mac song or Mac albums. Um, but of those 2011 releases, it definitely is my favorite. And I have it in the top 10, ranked at number 9 here. And so here is where we get into the projects that I absolutely love from Mac Miller that are some of my favorite albums ever um, and that I'm super, super grateful for. They helped me through a lot. They helped me learn a lot. Um, and... If nothing else, they just gave me company. So um, let's get right into them, man. At number eight, and a lot of people are going to think this is too low, but for all these albums in this top eight, people are going to have gripes about because I think these top eight are very interchangeable interchangeable based off of your personal preference. Um, and they're all different, so it's really hard to rank them. But nonetheless, I got good AM at number eight. Um, so good AM was a really good project that dropped in 2015. Um, it was actually one of the first Mac Miller albums that like really got me into Mac heavy. I was, I knew who Mac was and I liked Mac, but I didn't get into him super deeply until good AM. Good AM was, was really the one that, um, that got me deeper into Mac and got me deeper into really checking out his full projects and not just single songs here and there. Um, and man, brand name, rush hour, two matches, hundred grandkids, time flies, weekend, um, break the law, perfect circle, and really, really great track list here. Really, really, really solid track list here. A lot of versatility for Mac on this album. Um, you know, he flexes his rap ability, he flexes his songwriting ability, he even flexes his ability to do sentimental and more personal tracks and mix those with bangers. Um, so that was really cool to see on this album as well. Good AM is a really, really good album. It's a really, really good album. Um, go check it out if you haven't. I have that one ranked at number eight. At number seven, we have released in 2010 the iconic Kids mixtape, man. Kicking incredibly dope shit. And I wanted to put this one higher. Um, I couldn't put it higher just because the six albums that I have in front of it, I genuinely enjoy listening to more. And I also think that they're more mature, more well-crafted projects than kids, but kids just has such a fun, charismatic, you know, like childish energy to it. That is just such, so awesome. Um, everything, I mean, from the intro kicking incredibly dope shit, he just, Max sounds like a kid. He sounds like a kid, a, a mature kid, um, which is the point, obviously, especially when you can think about the movie that this uh, that inspired this album. Um, but nonetheless, like it just, it just has this real childish energy to it. And I absolutely love it. Um, songs like the intro outside, get them up is sick. Nike's on my feet is super awesome. You got to love the Nas sample and uh, just Mac is so smooth on that song. Se Senior skip day is another super nostalgic one. The spins, another super nostalgic party track. Um, this man sampled, um, owl city, on don't mind if i do which is crazy i wish traffic in the sky was on streaming because it is a really good song go go listen to that if you haven't heard it um but traffic in the sky was the one track from the mixtape that didn't make it onto streaming because of sample clearance reasons uh but paper route with chevy woods uh good evening right around kool-aid and frozen Pe pizza uh poppy yeah, man, it's a really, really good mixtape front to back. When I play it, I don't really skip anything, and it's just super fun to listen to, and I can understand people having it higher. Like, I know I know why people would have this in their, like, top three Mac Miller, Mac Miller albums. It is just such a fun listen, um, so I understand it for sure, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put it at number seven on my personal list, but nonetheless, I, I hope it's clear that I absolutely love Kids. I think it's 
a super dope mixtape and it, it is like definitely one of the iconic nostalgic like quintessential mixtapes of like my high school generation or my middle school and high school generation um yeah so many of those songs i had heard before and enjoyed and really grew to love before i even got super deep into mac miller like they, the, those songs were just that big for my generation so yeah shout out to kids man um and then we've got at number six i'm going with oops Gotta slide that over. And number six, I am going with Divine Feminine, released in 2016. Um, Divine Feminine is a really sick album because it is Mac Miller venturing into soul and R&B. And he is really good at that sound. Like songs like Dang, songs like Stay, some of my favorite Mac songs. And songs like We, uh, again, like some of my favorite Mac songs, man. He does really good with the soul and R&B sound. Um And I love that he went full-fledged with it into this project. It was something that was super unexpected, especially coming after Good AM, which was definitely like more traditional hip-hop, although it did have moments where he was pushing the boundaries. Um, But yeah, for him to go completely out of his comfort zone and completely into another genre of music for the most part on this album, it is still hip-hop, it is still rap, but heavily, you you could call this an R&B album, and and I wouldn't be mad at you, because it kind of is. Um... But yeah, and the production on here is incredible. Like a song like Skin, the production on Skin is like so good, super good. Um, But yeah, when I look at the Divine Feminine versus Kids and Good AM, the two that I have placed behind it, um, all phenomenal projects and I can understand people putting the two I have behind it above Divine Feminine. But I just think musically Divine Feminine is so much more impressive to me. Like, Like Kids is an album that I love to listen to. Divine Feminine is an album that I'm impressed by whenever I listen to it. Um, And I think that was just enough for me to give it the slight edge there. All right. And then we're going to get into the top five, man. My top five favorite Mac Miller albums. And of course, controversy is always going to come with these rankings. Um, So why hide from it? Let's just get right into it. At number five, I've got released in 2012, Macadelic. Now, this was the first mixtape where Mac was trying to really really visual visibly trying to be taken more serious as an artist um he wanted to get away from the frat boy label he wanted to get away from the pop white boy rapper label and and be more respected just as an artist overall and if that was his intention i mean this was a great album to do that with macadelic um production wise is much more unique and left field than anything that mac had put out prior to it um and subject matter wise it's much more mature and um i think more focused than anything that anything that mac had put out prior to it um and also more introspective than anything that mac had put out prior to it mac was kind of seen as just this fun have fun party kind of dude and macadelic really just showed a complete different side to him it it, you still got that fun party kind of dude but it was a different side there was a darker side a more introspective side um a more serious and mature side that we got on this album and i fell in love with this project man um i think it gives you a good mix of everything i think i get like boom bap introspective that i want on thoughts from a balcony but I think I also get that banger party aspect that I want on a track like Loud. But then I think you also get, um, you know, more like boom bap lyrical shit on a song like America. Um, so I just think there's a lot of versatility on this album. And I really, really enjoy this album. There's songs that I'm not as big on as other songs like Lucky Ass Bitch with, with Juicy J. It's a cool song. I don't skip it. But it's definitely not one of my favorites there. Um a song like Ignorant with Cameron is another song Another song that is cool. I'll, I listen to it. Um, I don't skip it, but it, it's not my favorite in comparison to these other ones here. Clarity is a moment where Mac ventured into singer-songwriting and R&B, and I just wasn't as big of a fan of as big of a fan of it as I would be when he dis, does it on later projects. Um, damn, I'm really struggling to speak today. <laughs> um but yeah, so I got Macadelic at five and, and me pointing out some of those tracks that I'm not as big on is just kind of me showing why it's at five and why it's not higher. Um, at number four, I've got watching movies with the sound off released in 2013. And some people might have watching movies with the sound off as like their favorite Mac Miller album. I know I see that a lot and I can understand why, because watching movies with the sound off is kind of like Macadelic, but even better. 
Um, and so if Macadelic is the type of Mac Miller that you fell in love with, like that sound of Mac Miller is, is the type that you fell in love with, I can understand why watching movies would be your favorite album because it is it is the peak version of of that era of Mac's career, at least in my opinion. Um, the Star Room, Avion, I'm Not Real, SDS, what a four-track start to an album. Um, and then you get the singer-songwriting stuff done extremely well on songs like Objects in the Mirror. Objects in the Mirror is one of Mac's best songs, and he doesn't even rap on it. Um, Red Dot Music is one of Mac's best songs, and he raps his ass off on it, and Action Bronson does as well, and Alchemist comes correct with an incredible, incredible beat. You get bangers still, like watching movies. Um, you get more lyrical shit, like suplexes inside of complexes and duplexes, which has a J Electronica feature, which Mac Miller getting a J Electronica feature at this time was super crazy. Um, and then, yeah, you still have the really meaningful and personal personal tracks like remember and aquarium um this is just a super impressive album overall a super versatile album overall there's a lot of variety shown here on this project um and watching movies with the sound off is just it's probably my favorite album of 2013 um and it is it is an incredibly impressive listen especially um, if you skipped over the macadelic mixtape so you're just maybe you're somebody who only really listens to albums Maybe you listened to Blue Slide Park and skipped over Macadelic and then now are listening to watching movies. I mean, the the growth in artistry from Blue Slide Park to watching movies with the sound off is extremely noticeable and extremely impressive, especially given it was only two years apart. So watching movies with the sound off, super dope uh, release in Mac's discography. And with that, we're going to get into the top three. At number three, might be a bit of a controversial ranking, but I have the posthumous release Circles at number three. Um, and it, you can tell when you listen to the album, these songs, if not the album itself, were mostly finished. They were pretty much done. Um, when What we're hearing is them, for the most part, in their final form or as close to their final form as they were going to get. And um, I think it's super, super beautiful, man. And um, it's an album that made me cry a ton when it came out. And I think emotional weight is um plays a big part in these rankings for me just because like if an album can make you cry especially make you cry a bunch which circles definitely made me cry a bunch um i think that's a testament to just how moving and um powerful the music is um circles is very minimal it's very low-key and subtle as far as sound goes but it's very impactful emotionally lyrically um and as far as what those sounds make you feel um so circles is a super impressive album for me it is uh in my opinion i think it's gonna go down as like one of the more like fondly looked at singer songwriter albums of the 2020s um just because it's coming from mac miller somebody who i think a lot of people didn't realize the talent mac had overall as a music musician not just as a rapper i mean his talent as a rapper was very evident um and if you knew his talent as a producer was very evident, but I don't think people realized his talent as a singer songwriter um, and potentially as like a pop or indie songwriter was as good as it is. Um, he uh, he showcased an incredible amount of talent on this album. And John Bryan, I think, did a really good and careful job um, with putting together the final project. Um, and I'm glad they did, man. I'm really glad that Max Estate decided to put this one out because I think it is very big for his legacy. And I think it was a really beautiful, beautiful send off, um, to, to his career of, of somebody who was one of the best artists and most beloved artists of my generation. So yeah, I'm, I was super, super happy with this release. I'm really glad his estate put it out. Um, the circumstances surrounding it suck, but it is an incredible album. And I think is going to be huge for Max legacy in the long run. So I have circles ranked at number three. And at number two, now, one and two is really hard for me, right? Ultimately, I ended up going with Faces at number two. Now, this this changes on a daily to weekly basis. You know, tomorrow, um, I might have Faces as my favorite Mac Miller project, but today, it's my second favorite. Um, it is incredible from front, front to back. I mean, for you to make a 24-track rap album... 
And I think every single track is great. I think every single track is warranted in being here. It's super unique production, incredible lyricism from Mac. Um, rapping wise, this is the best he's ever been. This is the best verses we've ever gotten from Mac Miller on this project. Um, and again, like the production is just super unique. This album is dark. It's psychedelic. It's weird. It's, 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 it's awesome. It's awesome. I can't even put uh, faces into words sometimes, um, but it is an incredible album. If you haven't listened to it, go listen to it. Um, and like I said, some days it's my favorite Mac Miller Mac Miller project. Um, this is the best he's ever rapped, um, and it is just incredibly impressive. It, I know it's a long one, but if you have the time, give it the time because it is a worthwhile listen. Faces by Mac Miller is incredible. Um. And I'm kind of getting, I'm kind of getting talked out here. Um, I've been uh, prior to recording this this episode, I did a biggest little sports cast episode. So I've been doing, I've been talking a lot. I've been talking for damn near two hours straight right now. So um, I'm kind of eager to get to the end of this. But at number one, I have swimming uh, by Mac Miller. Well, obviously it's swimming by Mac Miller. I have swimming at number one. You can tell my brain is fried right now. I have swimming at number one, and I think the decision to put swimming over faces resulted in, you know, when I think of Mac at large as an artist, I think faces showcases Mac Miller, the rapper, the best. Um, if I was saying Mac Miller is one of my favorite rappers and, oh, you should check him out if you're into rap, I would say faces is the album that you should go check out. But I think if you want to get an idea of Mac overall as an artist, I think swimming is the best example of what Mac was capable of in, in the entirety as an artist, um, whether it be, you know, singing and songwriting, whether it be rapping, whether it be production wise, I think faces or not faces. I think swimming just, just really showcases all of that, um, to a higher extent than faces. I think faces is more so just a straight rap project. Um, and so I think ultimately that's why I end up going with swimming. I think I'm more impressed by swimming just because of the overall mu musicality of the album and the overall focus of the album. Swimming feels like one long, one long song. It's a, it's an album that when I put it on, I let it play front to back and I don't skip anything. Um, and it really, everything has a, a specific feel, a specific tone to it. And it all meshes well together, even though some, even though the tracks feel very different at times, like Come Back to Earth, What's the Use, Self Care, very different songs from one another, but they all fit a similar vibe. Um, and it was just a really impressive, fully cohesive world feeling that Mac was able to create on Swimming. Um, and when I listen to the album, I'm in that world, and I'm in that world until the album cuts off. Um, yeah, I love swimming. I think conceptually, subject matter wise, it is probably his best. Um, yeah, and I, I love what he did with it. I love what he did with it. This was an album that is super nostalgic for me. It actually released like a couple days before my birthday. Um, and I just remember being in L.A., taking a bunch of edibles, listening to Jet Fuel. And um, there's just a lot of memories attached to swimming. And um, unfortunately, some bad ones, too, because it wasn't very long after swimming came out that Mac passed. Um but, you know, to a certain extent, that almost made the album even more important and personal um, for me, at least, um, because it was an album that I had loved so much prior to his passing that and, and it had come out so recently prior to his passing that his passing just this album was a way of me coping with his passing, um, which I think is another reason why it ultimately ends up at number one. This album is therapy at the end of the day. There's so many things that this album has helped me through. I bawled my eyes out to swimming like countless amount of times. Um, swimming has helped me figure out so many things. that just didn't make sense to me. Um, so yeah, I, I think I have to put swimming at number one. Um, as incredible as Faces is, as much as I love Faces, swimming I think is my number one Mac Miller project. And so that's going to do it, guys. That's going to do it for the Mac Miller ranking video. Um, rest in peace, Mac Miller. Please, guys, please go um, check out my two projects that came out last year if you want to hear me rap. Um, please go and check out The Biggest Little Sports Cast if you're a sports fan. I'm super stoked to have that podcast back. Um, my name is Kenny Moss. Um, rest in peace, Mac Miller. 
thank you for your artistry. Um, if you are watching this somewhere in the afterlife. Um, but yeah, man, that's going to do it for this video. I appreciate you guys, and I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.